Welcome to this tech video from American Scooter. Today, we're doing a T5 brake conversion on this 1974 Rally. Now, if you have an older pre-P-Series scooter like a Rally, a VBB, or a Sprint, you could do this modification with this kit from SIP, the Conversion Kit Brake Cable Rear Vespa T5 without sleeve. Uh, you will need one special tool, a pair of Nipex wire rope cutters, uh, Nipex 9561190. Check out the video description for links to everything I'm using in this tutorial. Hey, look at that guy. First off, got the cable here. Now notice the threaded end and then nothing on the other end, uh, along with the new brake arm you're going to need. So we'll go ahead, loosen the nut on the brake pedal that holds the old cable in place. Then we're going to pull that inner cable out from the outer sheath and just discard it. Uh, now, with the threaded end of the new cable facing the engine, we're going to thread the other end through the old outer sleeve, making sure to go through the slack adjuster at the bottom of the engine first. Fish that cable through the body and out by the pedal through the little tube in the side of the floor. Uh, and then we're going to slide that cable through the little hole in the retaining nut that holds the cable to the pedal. You can just kind of slide it up in there for now. Next, we're going to remove the hub and we're going to remove the rear brake pads. Now, be mindful when removing the little keeper clips on those pads as they can kind of go flying and they can get bent easily. They're just made of thin metal. And I always just replace these because they're just super cheap. Now, I rotate the brake arm uh, so that I can slide the pads onto the end of the brake arm shaft, still keeping spring tension. And then I can basically use a little screwdriver and just pull the pads right off. Next, you're gonna to need to get at that little cotter pin that's behind the old brake arm and remove it. Now I'm using a right angle pick to pull down on it, then my needle nose pliers to straighten it and remove it. With that pin gone, we can then slide the shaft out. The old spring and old brake arm are just gonna drop away. Uh, be mindful to check the O-rings and grease on the shaft. Now I had just rebuilt this engine, so everything's good here. Here we've got the other parts of the kit, the little barrel that the threaded end of the cable is going to go into, the retaining nut, and a new cotter pin. First, we need to dry fit the brake arm to the shaft, so to make sure that they fit together good. Uh, I had to clean this up on my bench grinder's wire wheel and then hit it with a little flat file to smooth some areas out. You really want to make sure that these two things fit together well before attempting to reinstall. With all of that done, we'll just slide the brake shaft back in, set the arm uh, in its proper orientation, uh, and then we can get our spring back up in place. We're going to just kind of keep the spring to the side. We're going to push the shaft all the way in, and we're going to set the brake arm up against the engine case, uh, revealing the little hole for the cotter pin. Slide the cotter pin in, bend it in place, and then you can reset that spring. Now you can reinstall your brake pads with your new clips and reinstall your rear hub and tighten your nut to torque specifications. And don't forget the cotter pin that goes in that rear axle shaft. Now we can get our cable length set. So I'm gonna put the little retaining nut on the end of the threaded end of the cable to keep me from pulling it out of the brake arm. Then go to the brake pedal, pull all the tension out of the cable while holding the brake pedal up. And I'll mark where I wanna cut it with a Sharpie. Then I can just slide this cable back a little bit um, and get my Nipex wire rope cutters on there and cut that cable. Now, I can't stress enough to get these cutters. Don't try to use some wire cutters you got laying around your shop. Uh, these Nipex wire rope cutters are specifically made for cable making. It is going to make this installation go much easier. It's going to shear that cable perfectly. Whatever junk cutters you got laying around your shop are just going to destroy the cable. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Just buy these things and if you're working with old Vespas and working with uh, cables a lot this is a great bit of kit to keep with your Vespa tools. Now with our cable cut I'm going to thread it back into that retaining bolt on the pedal. I'm going to tighten it up and then I'm going to check the length of the brake arm. I'm going to push on the brake arm while I rotate the drum to feel where the brake pads meet the inside of the drum uh, and then tighten that little retaining nut. Now here I needed to shorten my cable a little bit more. It was still a little bit too long. So I remarked it with the Sharpie, recut it, took about an inch or so off. Now with my cable length set, I'm gonna slide the cable back into the retaining bolt and I'm gonna tighten it up. I'm gonna go back to the rear arm, 
just like we did before, push on the arm and rotate the brake hub until I can feel the pads just starting to touch and I'm gonna screw that retaining nut in. And then I'm gonna go to the pedal. I'm gonna press down on the pedal while rotating the brake drum so that I can feel exactly where the pads just start to hit the inside of that uh, brake drum. And I'm gonna keep tightening that retaining nut until I get it set exactly where I want it. And I wanna be able to just touch that pedal with my foot and just begin to start making contact. And by doing this, you're gonna make your rear brake super tight. I mean, super, super tight. Way tighter than the factory setup ever could be. Uh, this is a great little kit to make your vintage Vespa <laughs> stop on a dime. Uh, I hope you liked this video. Uh, you know, click the old like and subscribe and uh, keep your eyes out. We got more stuff coming. Ciao.